What about the age of exploration? Uh, well, we're just going to talk about a couple of things kind of briefly here. Uh, we should know about the different motivations for for European exploration. Uh, trade, they want to find new places to trade with uh, and things to take from the new places they find. Fame and fortune, they want to become famous. They're curious. They don't know what's out there. One th cool thing about humans is we're always curious about what's out there. And a desire to spread the Christian faith. Uh, that's missionaries. And I wanted to give you some, play some way to kind of remember that. So, the fat cat meowed. That is a fat cat. That is not my cat. At one point, my cat was a bit fatter. Um, this, is, this is not my cat. It, it is a beautiful kitty. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you doing? Uh, you should know about the different new technologies that allow the age of exploration. Um, now, in my class, I don't spend a ton of time on this. I just figure, look, you guys already talked about exploration when you were younger. So, I mean, look, just remember that stuff. What you do need to know, I'll cover in here. But the other stuff, eh. Okay, so they had better maps as a result partially of things like the compass. Uh, the astrolabe. The astrolabe allows them to kind of figure out where they are in relation to the stars, what we would call latitude and longitude, and what they start using as such. Uh, you've got uh, faster ships that can go further. If you've ever played Age of Empires, you know you can't go off of the, or civilization. You know you got to stay right there on the coast, otherwise you might lose your ship. Um, but now they can go across. If, if you're not a video game nerd, then never mind about what I just said. And you got better weapons. Pa pow Ladies, you're welcome. That's right, I cleared out for this one. This is Prince Henry the Navigator. Portugal doesn't get the spotlight very often. Here we go. Portugal, where are you at? Here I am. Or he's not British. I don't know why he talks like that. He's all like, yo, I totally support navigation. In fact, I'm gonna open up a school for navigation. I would call it the School of Navigation. Thanks, Prince Henry. Of course, you've heard of Columbus, who sailed the ocean blue in 1492, the same year the Reconquista ended, too, uh, over in Spain, where they got rid of the Muslims and Jews. It's really quite horrible. Um, Columbus, you know, he discovered the New World. You probably also know that's a bit dicey to say he discovered the New World, because he wasn't even aiming for the New World. Uh, he was aiming for the West Indies. Um, the trick wasn't that people thought that the world was flat. I know that's what your elementary school teachers told you, but this is false. The problem was they didn't know how big the world was. So Columbus thought, okay, if I sail west from Spain, I'm going to get to the other side of Asia. He didn't realize there was a whole continent in between Europe and Asia. And it happens to be us, well, at least where I'm recording this, North America, Central America, South America. We just call it America. And um, he didn't know about that. So he discovered it, kind of. And, you know, there were sort of people here before. But he discovers it and um, goes back to Spain. And he's all like, guys. You will never guess what I found. A bunch of slaves and gold, which is really quite horrible. And uh, you can make up your own mind on that one. It is significant, though, from a historical perspective of, well, yeah, he brought Europeans over to the New World, what we call the New World. I mean, the Indians, the Native Americans, uh, they were already where it was there. Um, and um, that, that did change history. So we can't totally discount it. But at the same time, you could see where it might be problematic since it killed over 20 million Native Americans having the Europeans come over and bring their diseases and stuff. So there's that. Uh, a bunch of explorers did stuff. If you're really interested, you can pause this right now. I'll just pretend. And I just, I'm just pretending to pause in case you were like, wait a second, did I pause? Um, Ferdinand Magellan was the first guy to circumnavigate the world. He went all the way around it. He actually went the route that is on the map, not just like this. 
make sure when you are um, talking about Magellan, it's circumnavigation, not circumcision. I've had that appear in essays from students more than once, and while it is always hilarious, it is the wrong word. Uh, some came over to look for a mythical city of gold, the road to El Dorado. Um, it didn't work because there is no mythical city of gold. There's two conquerors that are worth knowing about. There's someone knocking. These are my children. My children showed up. Say hi, kids. Hi. Do you have a message about the Spanish conquest of the Aztecs? Um, yeah. Yeah. The Spanish should have conquered them. They're mean. Meanies. <laughs> it's fair. It's true. Oh, sorry for the interruption, everybody. My kids just stopped by, so I decided, you know what, let's just incorporate them. Anyway, um, I just want you to know certain names. Like the Aztec Empire, they were felled by Cortez. Now I've pictured left, the one that says Cortez. And the Aztecs are represented by um, this, I guess, represents the entire Aztec Empire. I don't know. Anyway, he divides and conquers, basically. Uh, much is made of the idea that he portrayed himself as a god. Um, taking advantage of native superstition, but this is kind of uh, exaggerated. Most historians don't buy that the Aztecs are truly believed that he was uh, the embodiment of a god or anything like that. He won. He won. Uh, the Incas, it's really hard to find pictures of the Incas. I want to just go on record as saying that on Google image. Uh, Pizarro uh, is the one that actually defeats the Incas. So I want you to know that. Uh, similar, uh, not as many men as there were Incas, but uh, he manages to take them out through a combination of deceit. Um, and, uh, I mean, you could give the guy credit. I mean, he was good at what he was doing, which what he was doing was, you know, tricksy. Um, of course, as soon as the uh, uh, Native Americans are defeated, they are enslaved. And um, it's actually, if you really think about this, this is awful, of course, but the reason that they eventually had to move to African slaves is because disease from Europe, which the Native Americans had no immunity to, was responsible for killing something like 25 million Native Americans. So... Uh, they had a, a labor shortage, so that's what caused them to start looking elsewhere. Uh, the cycle of conquest usually goes like this. You have explorers, then it becomes conquistadors, conquerors, then missionaries follow the conquerors, you have permanent settlers, and then it becomes an official European colony. Uh, you could see the value of gold and silver from Spanish America is quite huge. Um, you know, back in 1492, nothing, basically. And then you're, you know, going up, 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 up. Problem is, uh, this creates inflation within Spain because they are on the gold standard. So if you suddenly introduce a ton of gold, uh, gold becomes less valuable. Um, then uh, the uh, African nations begin to supply slaves to populate these new colonies, which are becoming quite profitable. This, of course, is the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, slavery wasn't invented by the Europeans. It had existed in Africa, but the, the thing was, it, it, you have slavery in many different places. Um, it's not usually based off race or whatever. It's just based off, hey, our guys beat your guys. When the Europeans come in, they already had these notions that Africans were somehow less human than them. Than the, than the Europeans. So this just is used to like reinforce these beliefs like, oh, it's okay to do this thing. It's okay to trade in slaves because our belief system says these people aren't truly human. They're barbaric. Um, they worship pagan gods. You know, they're not civilized. They're naked. So it's okay what we're doing. Now, of course, in real life, it is not okay. But that's the justification that the Europeans used. And uh, between um, the 16th and 19th century, about 10 million Africans are shipped to the Americas. Uh, this is a famous drawing of conditions on a slave ship. Obviously, it's quite miserable. 
as you would expect. Um, this is uh, bad for, well, obviously for the Africans, but it's especially bad uh, for um, for these new colonies because it, you know you've, you've just you're destroying cultures, uh, the Native Americans and the Africans. Um, all of this gold and silver going into Europe create inflation, which I already mentioned. Um, new products are introduced. Um, actually, did you know horses came over with the Spanish? Uh, horses weren't native to uh, the Americas, but um, the new products introduced. This is kind of a comprehensive, but not. I'm sure it's not comprehensive. I'm sure there's other stuff. Um, you have stuff that's going over from the New World to Europe: um, squash, turkey, coca, peanut, tomato. I don't know why I felt the need to put that uh, in red there. Uh, potato, corn, or maize. Tobacco is a huge cash crop. Cash crop, something you can't eat but uh, can be sold at a huge profit. And of course, uh, the disease that the, that the New World gives to the Europeans is syphilis. Uh, the Europeans trade uh, trinkets, liquor, and guns over to Africa, and then um, they take things over to uh, these, the New World, such as uh, things that weren't already in the Americas, coffee, sugarcane, smallpox and malaria, and measles, and whooping cough, and typhus, and diphtheria, and the flu. And th these are problematic, obviously. I do not know how they shipped over honeybees. I'm fascinated by this every time I have this slide. Uh, as I already mentioned, native populations are ravaged by disease, and colonial rivalries are deepened uh, countries will be competing with each other ultimately this will lead to war in some cases fighting over profitable trade routes uh, slave routes quite frankly the acquisition of slaves which is profitable but horrible obviously and um, that will lead to further wars in future chapters that you can look forward to so new colonial rivals uh, you've got here who the major players were the Spanish were major players uh, the British, the French, all of these people will be involved in trouble later on. All right, all done now. You kids have a nice night and farewell.